Whew. I sure hope that more people do what I'm about to do. I'm going to tear it to shreds. I'm going to rip it apart because that's 60 minutes now in 2023 without a new game announcement and with nothing. 60 minutes of fluff and fanciful I don't know what. And it's honestly just so disappointing. It's a disservice to the fans. And frankly, it's a disservice to the company itself. Good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. I cannot believe that we had another 35 minutes of basically nothing from the Pokemon company. Kudos to them for putting on these shows multiple times per year. But we now have February and August combining for 60 minutes of Pokemon glory. And instead, here's the story. Uh, nothing nobody really cares about. Sure, there are plenty of announcements for the TCG, the World Championship Hall towel thing, okay. We got a bunch of mini webisode series. We got Pokemon Go and Pokemon Sleep. This Pokemon Presents was full of nothing. We got a new trailer for Detective Pikachu, and let's start there, because Detective Pikachu Returns has a high and a low. It really runs the gamut so quickly. And please let me know in the comments if you think I'm crazy, or if you agree that this is just downright disgusting. Detective Pikachu Returns is $50. Hey, More cheaper Nintendo Switch first party releases. I'm all for it. Detective Pikachu Returns looks like a 3DS game. Holy crap, does that game look bad. Now, I'm fully aware that graphics don't mean everything. And the story and the charm and the mysteries do seem kind of interesting. And there's a decent following for the first game, so getting a follow-up is much appreciated. But you're telling me, in the four and a half to five years since this game was first announced, they, they couldn't have done a graphics pass? They couldn't have done a little boost, a little day one patch to improve things? Those faces. Those faces. And on the heels of Pikmin 4, which is quite possibly the best looking Switch first party game, it's just so disappointing. I do not understand why the Pokemon company, with the millions and billions of dollars that they have, with 20 million copies of Scarlet and Violet sold, 25 million copies of Sword and Shield sold, all sorts of spin-offs and legends and let's go, they have the cash. Invest in someone that knows graphics. You gotta bring in an outside hire? Bring it in. Why are we subjected to literal handheld graphics on a home console that has been a home console hybrid for seven years now? Why is Detective Pikachu Returns getting such a lackluster treatment? Why did Metroid Prime Remastered get way more visual prowess to the maximum than Detective Pikachu Returns? Scarlet and Violet is a whole nother beast. We can argue about the performance of that game, but at this point I say it's sure disappointing that they just don't care. They just don't care about graphics, they don't care about performance, and they're willing to just put stuff out and say, it has Pikachu, you will love it. Let's see how long that lasts for. They cannot go another Pokemon Presents with nothing. They showed off the DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which even as a massive lover of Scarlet and Violet, quite possibly my favorite Pokemon game, I think the DLC has always looked a bit lackluster, and I don't really like the direction they're going with it. Alas, I'll give it a chance. I'm not giving this Pokemon Presents negative marks for showing off the DLC. That's important. And it's releasing on September 13th, a Wednesday release which is a bit strange, but the first part will be December, September 13th, and then the second part might be December. It's coming in the winter time, so that's probably going to be December, January, February. I bet it's either December, since Nintendo currently doesn't have anything scheduled then, or January to kind of make the year start off with a bit of a bang. Hopefully those two DLCs do a nice job of keeping the Pokemon name in good graces, because these presentations tried everything to not. Yes, Diplin is cool. Give me a caramel apple, except it's possibly dangerous for my teeth. I really do like that new design, and I love everything Scarlet and Violet stands for. It sucks to go from being so high on the Pokemon company after Scarlet and Violet to like, oh my gosh, the performance is terrible, they're gonna fix it, they're not gonna fix it, they have the two worst Pokemon presents ever. I have been singing this song for years now. If you don't have enough to show, don't do the event. It's terrible to me that we all have to say, oh, a 35 minute Pokemon presents? It's probably nothing. Do you see how backwards that logic is? Do you see how we have been trained and conditioned to think totally upside down? There is no world in which we get a 35 minute Pokemon presentation and our expectations should be that it's junk. But that's what I see on Twitter. Good thing I didn't expect anything new. Good thing I didn't expect any more Pokemon announcements. How? How do we have a Pokemon Presents and we've conditioned everyone to expect nothing? 
They did drop the Pokemon trading card game and Pokemon Stadium 2 onto Switch Online, probably the biggest announcements of the day. And that goes to show how poor this was because they are reluctant and probably will refuse to put the actual mainline games on the Nintendo Switch Online services. They could have announced Red, Yellow, Blue. They could have put a number of things, Ruby, Sapphire. They could have done a wonderful job to really lift up this program. And in the same way that Metroid Prime Remastered really helped elevate the February Direct, they could have done the same with this awful August Pokemon Presents by releasing games that people really wanted on Switch Online. Instead, we get two titles that are like, hey, check them out if you've got some spare minutes. They are fun games from my nostalgic past, but they're not game changers. Nothing in this presentation really changes anything or moves the needle from Pokemon, except down. I don't understand what the point of having an event is when you don't have stuff to say. Just don't have the event. We've seen an era where everyone wants to have their own live stream. We've seen the dissolution and the spread of the game convention concentric to everybody everywhere. One time it was E3 and everybody went there and it was like Christmas for gamers. And then they didn't like that. They wanted to do their own live streams. They want to do their own countdowns. They want to do their own premieres. Everybody has to have their own shine. But in reality, what's happened is that the own shine becomes dull because it's collectively that it's exciting and it's disparate that it's dull and boring. The Pokemon company is guilty of this, maybe more than most others, because they still insist on having long shows and then leaving you saying WTF. What was the point of that presentation? And really, what is the future of Pokemon on Switch? It seems like we are entering a no man's land because of the new system that is apparently launching next fall. In the past, the Pokemon company would not go so long without announcing a new title, and it does really feel like Detective Pikachu Returns is just being shoved out there like, please go, you're $50, you have awful graphics, you're coming out, and we hope that you maybe sell. Possibly, it's Pokemon, it will. Oh, by the way, no movie, even though they have the whole neon sign, no neon in Detective Pikachu Returns, so that was a bait and switch. But anyhow, they now don't have anything for early 2024, and I don't know that they'll have anything for mid-2024. There may not be a new Pokemon game, until the Switch 2 comes out. Now, part of this could be shifting timelines, maybe delays along the way over the past few years. Perhaps the Pokemon company was ready to launch into Switch 2 earlier than Nintendo intended, and maybe that's part of the problem. <laughs> but let me tell you a big warning. If the Pokemon company does not get their act together, visually and performance-wise, once we upgrade to Switch 2, and once we have far more RAM, far more memory, far more power, it is going to stand out even worse and I will not support it. I think it's really bad that we're seven years into the Switch cycle and we still can't develop for this system in a way that takes advantage as we see other Nintendo developers take advantage. Pikmin 4 is stunning. I throw that thing up on my big screen and I'm like, man, maybe the Switch ain't too bad. I see Detective Pikachu Returns and I say, man, the Switch is so bad. But in reality, it's TPC who just doesn't get it. And I guess they haven't got it for a long time. They, they really, really tricked us by launching two massive Pokemon games in 2022. They really threw us for a loop. They gave us new Pokemon Snap, and then they had Legends Arceus, and they had Scarlet and Violet, and we thought, okay, they're really turning a corner. Doesn't seem like it. It, it doesn't seem like it. The drawn out, slow nature of this DLC reveal, I feel like we've seen it 50 times, and we just finally got a release date. 35 minutes of nothing, Cafe Remix upgrades. Oh, does anyone even play that game? Maybe there's some people that this is really a fun show for, and it does feel like Pokemon is probably targeting a 10-year-old always. I feel like they have no care for their older fan base, and they just want to target the forever 10-year-old. The unfortunate part is that we're not 10 anymore, and we are 20, we are 30, we are 40, and we'd like to still enjoy these presentations and have a good time. And the Pokemon company insists that we do not, don't have the show. If Nintendo has nothing new to show in September, don't have a Direct. I don't understand the logic of needing this showcase. The Pokemon games are selling super well. Drop a trailer for the Scarlet Violet DLC Teal Mask release date. What's so hard about that? Twitter posts the trading card game and Pokemon Stadium 2 for Switch Online. What's so hard about that? Don't do 35 minutes and act like we're idiots. Everybody hated this, nobody loved it, and you have no announcements. Or, if you insist on doing the show, if upper management says we will do two Pokemon Presents, then make sure you have something, even if it's a tease. Pokemon Company has been great before, 
at stupid little teases, right? Like, oh, they just show like a spinning crystal. And you're like, what's that? Oh, it's the, the terror types. Give us something. I don't know. They're working on new games. They are. They're, they're not sitting pat. They're done with the DLC. They're not working on nothing. They have things in development. And believe me, they haven't been working on Detective Pikachu Returns for a while now. They have new stuff cooking. And maybe they're not ready to show us a, a trailer or a vertical slice. Give us a tease. Throw a Pokemon on the screen. Get Ken Sujimori to draw something up. Come on. There's no reason that we should be sitting through 35 minutes of boredom and nothing. And I implore the Pokemon company to do better. And I'm telling you, the reckoning is coming. After a terribly performing Scarlet and Violet that they refused to fix, that would have even been noteworthy. They could have won this show and stolen away my rant by just announcing a performance patch for this game, but they don't. They continue to put their best foot forward even when they, I bet, know it's not their best foot. So they've got a poorly performing Scarlet and Violet that saw sales come to a screeching halt. They have a horrible graphics Detective Pikachu Returns that could be really fun and thankfully is $50, but doesn't show a whole lot of care from the developer. It feels like the Pokemon company just tries to do whatever they can to profit and cash in on the brand cachet. And like I said, act like everyone is 10 years old, just like Ash Ketchum himself. But just like Ash Ketchum has come to an end, this will also come to an end. I don't think the Pokemon company can enter a 4K era of Switch 2 with this lackluster of a performance. Their reckoning is coming. It's time to step up. It's time to move into a new era where things like performance and graphics mean something, where things like catering to your fans with announcements that are exciting mean something, with having respect for the people that made you millionaires and billionaires mean something. This Pokemon Presents to me was the worst presentation we've had in years for anything adjacent or directly related to Nintendo Switch. It was disgusting and I'm glad that I skipped it. I had a feeling that it was going to be bad. I really hope for a new game announcement. I thought we'd get one. And I still think it could have been bad with one announcement, but we got zero. And it's that expectation, that this met expectations, because we've been trained that the expectation is nothing. That's wrong. It's not fun, and it's not the Nintendo way. And the Pokemon Company, they need to fix this. Let me know if you agree in the comments down below, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive. And until next time, Switch Force, out.